I know there are some people who are going to be offended by the language. If you are offended by language, there is the door. Come back in eight minutes. All right. I'm here with Richard West. Richard, it's so great to see you. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. No problem, Ryan. Glad to do it. Perhaps the most favorite part is the part where I go over commercial radio. And that is uh, we talk about obscenity and indecency in the media. Specific a case, particularly what's known as the George Carlin case, where the uh, New York radio station aired his famous routine, seven words you can never say on TV. Two of which, by the way, you can now say on TV. What amazes me is I thought everybody had probably heard that routine. And I'll have somebody in the class every semester say, oh, that was funny. I never heard that before. Some of those words can be spoken now. What are some of the examples of the words that, that can be spoken now that used to not be able to be spoken? Uh, one of them is the word piss. You hear that on TV all the time. Matter of fact, I even heard a uh, local newscast, and this shocked me, okay? It takes a lot to shock me. But um, there was a church on the south side of San Antonio was broken into, and a lot of their uh, musical equipment was stolen. And the, they're interviewing the minister, and the minister says, this really pissed me off. And I'm sitting here, did he really say that? Like what's one big idea or one concept that when they graduate, you want them to remember this one thing? You're not gonna get paid a lot if you go in the media, um, at least not to start. That, that was the cardinal rule back when I was doing it. It's still a cardinal rule. You've gotta work your way up, you gotta pay your dues. And then you're, you know, you can, if you wanna be a big star, you can be a big star, maybe. You know, that, that would be the one thing I want people to remember if they're planning on going into the media is you've got to pay your dues. Nobody's going to hand you anything. Yeah, there's that famous 10,000 hours thing. Do you think it takes about 10,000 hours of real work to make it in the media? That's in, a, that's in the first month. Yeah, you, you really have to spend a lot of time. You know, people would get in, this jockey would walk in the studio, put the records on, and instantly, you know, just be Mr. Funny Guy and all that. You had to have an hour of prep time. Or you would sit down, you know, and decide, okay, this is what I'm going to talk about today. This is the joke I'm going to tell. Uh, so there's more work to it uh, if you go into the media than people realize. You still have that, the local stations. It's owned by local uh, broadcasters, as opposed to uh, the iHeart radios, which you have some guy sitting out in Los Angeles just voice tracking. The comments he makes are good for, you know, 350 stations across the country and the comments made all at the same time. There's a station up in Austin uh, called Bob. We have Jack in San Antonio, but Jack is partly live. Didn't realize that till I had somebody in class one time who had a friend who worked there and he told me, but uh, Bob is completely automated for all practical purposes. Voice tracked. You have somebody out in Los Angeles. Bob has lots of records and here's another one. If I wanted to create a podcast or if I wanted to create, you know, videos in social media, I wouldn't necessarily have a chance at, on radio because it's all that one person in LA, whereas in, in social media or in podcasting, I have a chance to get my voice to be heard because it's me to an audience of potentially anyone. Oh well, yeah. Um, but here again, you know, if you go to work at a local station, it's owned locally, then you can be yourself.